Welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in on today's latest podcast episode. Thank you very much to the lads for coming on. Mickey, uh, Connor, Dave and Doug. All the lads' channel links are in the description. Make sure you do head over there, subscribe to all their socials and check out their amazing quality content that they release daily. So make sure you do head over to their, their, their lads' channels anyway. Well, thank you very much, lads, for coming on. And before we do get straight into the day's topics and debates, I really want every single one of you to get involved in the comment section below on all these stories, and we'll reply to every single one of you. Um, but, lads, thank you very much for taking the time out for coming on. Hopefully, every single one of you is keeping safe and well. And a huge shout-out and a big thank you to all the key workers and everyone that is combating COVID-19 on a daily basis. But how are we doing? Uh, we'll start off with Mickey before we get straight into it, mate. How are you doing? Um, you keeping safe, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm working a lot, mate. I'm still working. I've worked through it. In fact, I'm working double the amount of hours at the moment. I'm busy. As everyone knows, I work for Amazon, so we're busy delivering essentials, apparently. But we'll go into that another time. Yeah, you try and keep doing you, Mickey, as well, uh, for uh, continuing to, to be in work. And, uh, and, and, and Doug, you're, you, you're a key worker as well, aren't you, mate? Hopefully you're, you're keeping safe. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not too bad. I was struggling earlier, to be honest. Um, I've been struggling really badly today. Uh, it's just, it's been ten weeks since I saw my granddad, um, and every Monday I used to, I used to always, you know, go and see him. So you know, it's it's really been really really tough, and it's been nine weeks since I saw my my fiance. Uh, but there has been news that today that apparently Scotland are going to look at maybe easing their lockdown situation on the twenty eighth of May. So. Fingers crossed that happens because I'm, I'm kind of getting to the stage where I'm like I'm used to it, uh, I'm but I'm not used to the fact that I'm the only person leaving the house because I'm obviously a key worker. Um, all, all my all my other like my my parents like they they work um, like my dad's an accountant so he's having to work from home. Mum works in a music shop so she's having to work from home. My brother works in the same music shop he's having to work from home, and obviously the youngest one is at uh, is at high school. So it's very, very uh, strange circumstances, but apart from that, I've just been enjoying the Bundesliga this weekend um, and obviously reacting to the big news in Scotland, which we will get to. But uh, apart from that, I am absolutely fine and dandy, and I hope everyone is uh, fine and dandy as well. Yeah, nice one, that. And everyone, if you're ever struggling, I know, as Doug said, then I've, I've, I've happened to be staying in anyway, but if you ever want to talk or anything, everyone, just drop on one of our channels, drop your comments in the comment section below, uh, or it is up on Twitter or any social media. Uh, we're always here 24-7, and, and hopefully every single one of you is keeping safe. Um, Connor, how are you doing, mate? You, you and Doug have been doing the FIFA content. You had me on um, early this week, didn't we? It was, it was good. It was fun. Um, it was some yeah. cracking cracking games anyway. Obviously, not a lot of you that do like FIFA, but uh, it, Connor's got the FIFA content out there. Head over there. Um, some cracking videos but mate how are you doing i'm very well thank you mate yeah um of course isolation's had us doing weird and wonderful things and we thought why not last sunday you know do a fifa tournament style stuff i know dave is thinking oh they're talking about fifa yet again but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, one, it's one of these things that you know the younger generation you know we love you know games and all like that and yeah of course you know if anyone is also on games, let us know. But uh, yeah, at the minute, it's just literally the PS4, Xbox, and all like that. Like Call of Duty, I think, is just passing the time uh, pretty much uh, through lockdown. But yeah, uh, apart from that, happy that the Bundesliga's back. Uh, happy that football's back. It is kind of like a pre-season friendly, but, you know, I don't care. It's football. Um, but yeah, I'm just over the moon, mate, that football is back. And well, hopefully soon enough. Liverpool can uh, be back in action real soon, but apart from that, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I saw that. Don't, and Dave, uh, how are you doing, mate? Are you all keeping safe? I think just before we went on, you're, you're, are you back into work now, mate? Yeah, just back today after eight weeks out. Eight weeks out. Eight weeks without a haircut. Eight weeks out of work. Um, yeah, just, get, just actually it was good to get back into work, even though I was dreading going in. Like it was like an extended holiday, really. Eight weeks, like it's a long time, and just back into it, back into the groove. Um, football the weekend with the Bundesliga helped a bit, I suppose. It was still a bit weird. We'll talk about it, I'm sure, but 
Um, today was the day, Jack, and he's all know, today was the day of the parade in Liverpool. I was meant to be there. I'd be flights booked, hotel booked. Actually, your house was booked. <laughs> everything ready. <laughs> I, I'd every, sorry for telling you that, Jack. I'd, uh, everything was ready to roll. That's the only bad thing about today. But other than that, safe and well. And sure, your health, your wealth, my friend. Yeah, spot on that. And I think uh, everyone it will will come back football. Everyone keeping safe. Nice one, lads. Great to hear that you're all doing good. But we got, we're going to be talking about the Premier League statements on the return to training as well. A couple of lads have mentioned anyway, the Bundesliga, which we'll, we'll talk about um, how, how we've all felt. And we want to know your thoughts at home, how you felt the Bundesliga has, has started. If there's been some points that you've, you've liked that you've seen um, and, and some points that you haven't. I know it's on social media, I think a lot of people were talking about the, the contact of the players still, but if football is a contact sport. You're never going to eradicate contact in, in, a, in a contact sport anyway. But I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, and really, you've started the ball rolling in the Bundesliga, but we'll talk about, a bit about that later anyway. But the big news coming out um, from the Premier League now, this is from LFC's official website anyway. I'll, you can see the statement here. Um, the Premier League, Premier League released the following statement on Monday afternoon. Goes on to say, Premier League, Premier League stakeholders voted un, un, massively to, to return to a small group of training for tomorrow afternoon. The first steps towards restarting the Premier League when safe to do so. Step one of the return to training protocol enables squads to train whilst maintaining social distancing. Contact, uh, contact training is not yet permitted. The first stage has been agreed in consultation with the players, managers, Premier League club doctors, independent experts and government's strict medical protocols of the highest standards will ensure everyone returns to training in the safest environment possible. The health and well-being of all participants in the Premier League is a priority and the safe return to training is a step-by-step process. Full consultation will now continue with players, managers, clubs and the PFA and the LMA as protocols for full contact training are developed. Lads, let me know your thoughts. We'll kick off with Doug. Um, what do you reckon on, on, on the statements that is being released today, mate? Uh, it's positive, isn't it? It's absolutely positive. And obviously, we've, we've seen from the you know the Bundesliga, they take, they've taken this really, really seriously health-wise as well. Um, but yeah, the thing is, like, you're not going to be able to take out like contact sport. You're not going to be able to take out, you know, tackles, etc. So, uh, but obviously, it's it's small steps. I'll say that first. It's small steps to get it back, but uh, it, it looks promising. And um, you know, obviously, the, if everything goes to plan, it looks like June the nineteenth is a date that seems to be being mentioned uh, for the for the return. So. It looks looking like looking bit looking likely, uh, looking likely at this moment, present moment in time. But I'm I'm really really that statement gave me a little bit of confidence today, and it it it's looking like 19th of June is looking like a very very likable date that could ret- make the Premier League return. Thanks for that, Mickey. Hey, what are your thoughts on on the statements? It's a positive sign, isn't it, that the Premier League want to get it done? There's a few leagues shutting down. Uh, the Bundesliga is showing the way forward, I think, when it comes to health of the players and whatever and how they can get it done with the contacts. Um, I'm sure as the government relax laws, the football will follow suit, uh, which is probably what they're waiting for, really, for the contacts, is for the government to say we can start mingling with other people. Um, I really believe that the league does need to be finished but at some point, if it carries on too long, we may have to look at ending it. I hope we don't because I want this to be a real title, not a tainted title, if you know what I mean. But positive news going forward. Yeah, spot on there. Hey, Dave, is he, are your thoughts on that there? Um, yeah, as the lad said, it's positive. I mean, it's, it's a baby steps, really, isn't it? I mean, um, I even heard, I know Doug was saying the 19th. I think that was the original date, but I heard now it could even be the 26th or, because they're thinking, a lot of the managers were saying that 
they might need an extra week just to get players fit. They don't want players coming back not fit and then getting injured. Half the squad will be injured, you know what I mean? So I, I have a feeling that we probably end of June. But realistically, if we can get it back behind closed doors, without fans, whatever it is, and just get the two wins we need. As Mickey said, it mightn't even it, they mightn't get it finished. You know, they mightn't get the round of what is it, ninety games or something. Ten. We've nine games, some teams have ten games left. Once we get our two wins and we get that league over the line, with mathematically over the line, let's say, it takes that tainted title, you know, it takes that tainted part off the league. Listen, if it happens and the league doesn't go ahead and we win the league, we're handed league, we'll take it. But I, I want to win it on the pitch. I really do. And I mean, talking about contact sport, if you take contact out of football, you might as well play Sabudio. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Sabudio, you know what I mean? Like, forget about it. So there will be contact. It's just, it won't be the same. I'm watching this, we'll talk about the German League, but it just isn't the same. And I'm not expecting it, the Premier League to be the same when it comes back. But good, good news, good news today. Yeah, as Mickey and Dave and Doug have been talking about there, um, kind of, it seems uh, like the, the, it's it's important that we do get it right at the right time, isn't it? Obviously, um, it's a day by day process. Obviously, um, in terms of medical, the government advisors and everything. Um, it's what are you, you, you any thoughts on on the statement, lad? Uh, I I echo the exact same words the other lads have said. It's a it's a correct step in the right way then you could say and you know like all of us we've all you know we've we couldn't wait for the Bundesliga to return it was weird you know with no fans but you know it was football and to be fair they were doing it in the correct way they've done it you know so far in the correct way and it looks like so far that you know everything looks to be good uh in terms of things like that so you know and plus as well from now until the Premier League does return, whenever it does, like the 19th or whenever, um, you know, if the Bundesliga does do something wrong, then the Premier League can learn from that and try and improve on it a lot more. Um, the other thing as well with, you know, the you know the league and everything like that, I also agree with, I think Mickey said it, um, you know, if it can't get done, then, you know, it needs to happen. I think one of the ways they've said is the points per game system which would mean like Liverpool, you know, win the league by like 30 points, which would be, you know, pretty accurate, I'd say, you know, with what Liverpool were going to do. Um, but yeah, it's it falls down to that again. It's not so much Liverpool are the talking point because we all know we're going to win the league. It's more of the relegation teams. This is the whole conversation and everything like that. It's not just Liverpool. Liverpool are the easiest, you know, people in this situation. It's more the relegation teams. What happened to them and the promoted teams, to be fair, because, of course, you've got Leeds and you've got West Brom, I believe, that are second, but then you've got the likes of Fulham and others like that. So depends on that type of thing. But I'm very confident now with what's happened so far in the Bundesliga that the Premier League can return uh, along with the Championship. And then hopefully then we can finish this season off, just get us our two wins out of the way which that's what I want more importantly. I don't mm. care about anyone else. I want those two wins. Uh, that's probably the, like, the most selfish thing I could ask for, for anything. But um, yeah, apart from that, just get the season done. And then, you know, we'll think then towards next season, what can possibly happen? Will it start as usual? Will they, you know, change it? And they might do it, you know, next year again, obviously with a World Cup uh, year, the next year and things like that. Yeah, it just depends on what they're going to do really. Uh, from next season on. Yeah, it's a very interesting point, mate. You made there, lads, spot on. In terms of the, I think I've seen somewhere, everyone, um, let us know in the comment section below. But was it, lads, that League Two, League Two got abandoned? Was it, yeah. um, they've stopped League yeah. Two? So I think, I feel that everyone's safety is paramount to everyone. It's, and the safety of every individual around the world is so important. But I think as we as we go and, and lay in daily, I think it's going to be interesting. But for the league, the teams that are, as Connor said, then Liverpool top of the league, ridiculously at the top. It's going to be the teams that are saying League One, League Two, and the the Conference Fuzzy teams that are going to be getting promoted. They're missing out on promotion, and um, mm. so it'll be interesting to see in terms of the legal action where the other teams do. But it, everyone's in the same situation in, in world football. The the French league, they've just awarded. PSG the title um, and they give 
then it was Mbappe, the, the goal scorer, and um, obviously he's leading goal scorer anyway. But I think all their teams in the relegation zone got relegated in France. But Germany mm. is leading the way, and it's going to be mad. It's going to be interesting. And I think if it is the case, Liverpool do get the league title, but Connor's spot on there. And I think we'll probably talk about it in a little second. The teams at the bottom and the championship. Uh, I'll start with Mickey. Uh, how would you go about doing the situation? Would you invite teams from the championship or players, uh, teams from the the lower league to obviously the Premier League, league being that being the championship? Would you add first and second into the Premier League but still keep the relegation zone and have a more bigger Premier League and have a and then but have more relegation spots? Next season, would you, would you go about it that way? Um, I'm very interested to see what he's how you use it, use it, go about it, Mickey. Hey, I was on mute, lah. He's on mute. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. For me, yeah, okay, I'm ready now. Sorry, I forgot. I was yeah, on mute. Right, um, for me, it's if it goes on, if the end of the season it goes on points per game, the relegation teams after a set, simple as that. I don't see where they stand morally or legally if they say they can't be relegated. Same for the Championship. The teams, Leeds and West uh, West Brom have fought hard this year. If they don't go up, it's a travesty. And people, teams that have struggled don't go down. It's a travesty, in my opinion. The only people shouting loud about n- vulling the, the seas and, and not having anything happen are those in the relegation zone or near it. And I understand it. But at the end of the day, they have to accept if it's points per game and you and then points per game put you in the bottom three, you're, you're in the bottom three. Mm-hmm. Sim, simple fact is we know seasons balance out over a period of time. It's very rare someone really pulls that run up anymore. It used to happen. It used to be one team pull up. But recently now, if you, the bottom three have usually gone down this time with 10 games to go. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm 100 sure on that. Um I wouldn't have had a bigger season because let me tell you, there's going to be interruptions next season. Mm. So having a bigger, bigger Premier League makes it longer. We've got the Euros that have got to be played in the summer. Mm. Mm. Uh, th- that won't get cancelled this time. I'm 100% certain of it. I think they'll look at playing it with no crowds if they can, if, if, other than cancelling it. So to me, points per game if they end the season. Wherever you are, that's you have. If you're in a regular zone, accept it. But I guarantee you, if that does happen, there will be people doing legal things. But I don't think they'll win. Yeah, it's what's on there, um, Dave. What do you reckon on? I think that's probably it's what's on what Mickey said. Then I think. Would you, would yeah. you do anything in terms yeah, of Yeah, I would. I actually, well, I, I'd agree with what Mickey said, except. I heard a little tinker in the, in the background talking about the FA Cup and the League Cup not being played next year. Did you hear that next season? Because you, you'll have too many lower teams uh, playing. They might need to play next year. League One and League Two. I don't know how they're going to play without fans. They, 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 for no fans to be in the lower level teams to be in the stadiums, that's their bread and butter. So if there's no teams mm. going, if there's no fans going to a League One or a League Two game, how the hell are they going to survive? So there could be a possibility of even the League Cup not being played next year, which gives the Premier League a freer run. Then if Europe as well, if the top four places, European places at stake at the top is a lot of money. But it's all about money, guys. It really is. To be relegated out of the Premier League, I can understand the bottom teams being afraid at the moment because being relegated is is huge, especially in a pandemic year. Like, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen next year. To be relegated this year, what a disaster that would be. But what do you do? You don't know what to do. I mean, you could make the Premier League bigger, let two come up, have 22, leave the three in, have 22 teams in it. But as Mickey said, it'd be a lot more games. But if you cancel the League Cup or FA Cup or both, it gives you a bit more leeway. I think they're looking at that now. That's what I heard. So that's a possibility. Or else just hope this league plays out. The three, de- the three teams get uh, properly like relegated, whoever finishes bottom. And the three come up from the pre- the championship, and then we're okay. But it's just really if the league can't finish, if the leagues can't finish, that's where the problem is, isn't it? Yeah. I, 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 there's no easy answers, unfortunately. There's no easy answers. Yeah. On that, well, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, 
isn't it a fact that if they do cancel it null and void, everyone has to pay back some of the TV money anyway? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I read yeah, that. But yeah, but I, I heard the TV money that the, they want money back no matter what. Even if the Premier League finishes because it's behind closed doors, they're still going to ask for money back. I heard because don't don't the the government want it on free per free television or YouTube or something where you don't have to pay mm. and your subscriptions go out the window. So there's got to be an issue there as well. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Very interesting, everyone. I think, uh, it, as Dave just said, then I think I have seen a lot more talk of that um, being free to display. It'd be interesting to see if it's on BBC, like it used to be or years gone by anyway. Um, talking a very long time. Um, I wish it was still on the BBC. Uh, we would, uh, everyone pays in for your, your TV license anyway, and you got Sky Sports. That, and Well, not Sky Sports, but you got uh, Premier League football. Um, <laughs> but that would be nice um, if it is that, because I think it would be a lot more accessible, especially if we are in a current lockdown. It would give people a bit of joy in, in these dark times anyway that we currently face, but it would give people a bit of a boost um, and it would give people a boost around the world anyway. Obviously, P- TV stations, obviously, you've got the is it different news TV companies anyway around the world that broadcast Premier League football. The only people that don't get the, 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 the free... Um, the licensing really is people in England. It, it, obviously, everyone abroad in Australia, America can all watch it um, for uh, every single game with Liverpool. I wish we could, but obviously, obviously you have to go down certain corridors. To, if you, especially if you, if you haven't got a subscription to Sky or BT, um, you have to go certain avenues anyway, naughty avenues, um, <laughs> to, to watch the footy anyway. But uh, Connor, um, would you would you like to see that in, in terms of? Would, how would you, if you were on the board of the Premier League or a board member of Liverpool, how would you go about any anything that you would put in place, possibly, to, to really... Football manager. Football manager. Just, just do it all on football manager and get that sorted like that. No, I'm joking. Um, it's, it, it's like the other, the other lads have said, it's one of the most hardest decisions that they could possibly do. But I think if they were to do it, then the points per game system is probably the best, um, in my opinion, anyway. Um, But yeah, and then, you know, it's like the other said, you know, if they want to, you know, go through the courts and try and argue the toss with it, then, you know, they'll lose because, you know, it's a pandemic. We've never done this in our lifetimes before. It's like a one in a hundred year type thing. And, you know, no one knows what to do. No one has the answers. And it's like what Dave said, it is all about money. It's about the TV money and, you know, things like this. I think um, I think the UK government has said at least 10 games has to be put on YouTube or something like that, or free. So, you know, it's it's going to be something weird like that. I know that, you know, I was looking, I thought that the Bundesliga might have done something similar mm-hmm. where, you know, they put a couple of games, but of course they kept it all on BT Sport. And to be fair, like, it, it goes back, like what we were talking about, I think in a previous video about like transfer money and things like that with the tv deals and that it's like they are going to want money back which gives you know teams less to spend and other things like that and if you are like a norwich or west ham then you know that you know derails the uh, season then practically because you know before you go into the season already so say you know if norwich gets relegated they'll know in the championship how much money they actually got to develop the squad how much they can actually sell how much they can gain and things like that but they won't have a clue because none of us know at the moment what is going to happen in terms of like money deals and things like that i think the clubs themselves are massively confused because you know they that they themselves they want to you know the majority want to get the season done that's that but it's like what mickey said the likes of you know uh brighton norwich west ham they don't they want to avoid it and you can see clearly why but you know that can't happen they've completely taken that off the table i think the head of the fa has said that null and void is completely off the table yeah, yeah so it's at the end of the day they're gonna to have to figure out some way it's impossible how but me personally i think points per game system is the perfect way to do it and if that does mean uh, you know, Norwich finished bottom and then, you know, a West Ham. And I think, was it Bournemouth that were that 
or around there or near, gonna get nearly Villa. relegated. Was it Villa? Villa? There we go. So you know things like that, and you know you look at Aston Villa if like they spent a hundred million quid in the summer, so they're gonna lose a massive amount of money. So they are gonna you know probably sell their top talent in the championship and you know they won't be able to recruit uh, recruit as they would like so you know it begs the question in that aspect what they are actually going to do for next season yeah so just before we go on to the Bundesliga uh, um, the lads what they've mentioned is spot on I think yeah. I've asked the same question to you Liz, and in that you would go down any avenues if you were in charge um, well just Obviously, we've been speaking about League Two um, being obviously um, like obviously brought to an end. So my understanding is that the three promoted teams are going to be promoted immediately. So that's Crew Alexandra, Swindon, and Plymouth. They're all they're all promoted. Then there's going to be a one-legged playoff between uh, obviously Exeter City, Cheltenham Town, Colchester United, and Northampton Town. So that's they're going to have like one-legged playoffs, and then obviously they'll be behind closed doors. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure. In fact, if Stevenage are going to get relegated because obviously they're in the relegation zone at this present moment in time. So I don't know if the team coming up from the. I don't know. If, I don't know if anyone's getting promoted from the national league or anything. So obviously you've got to, you've got to put that into perspective as well. So I could see League One doing that as well. I could see League One potentially getting um, the whoever's in the promotion to go up, and then obviously whoever's in the playoffs to have a one-legged playoff or something like that. So. But yeah, average points per game. As far as I'm aware, I saw in the Premier League, I saw North City bottom, Villa 19th, West Ham 18th. So I don't know. I don't know if that... I, I mean, honestly, I think if West Ham got relegated, I have to say, I think every West Ham fan would demand Gold and Sullivan and Brady to go. And in my honest opinion... If West Ham do go down because of this points per game ratio, I think it would be better for them because then they get rid of those three, three people who, let's be honest, are not football people; they're business people. So you know that's something else to say. But for me, if if we can finish the season, I think the points per game ratio is, as the other guys have said, is the right way to do it. Yeah, I think he's hit the nail on the head. Every single one is. I think. Everyone, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below how you would, if you were in charge of the Premier League or in charge of one of the Premier League teams, how would you go about the, the current situation in terms of resuming Premier League football? Um, let us know your thoughts on what everyone's had to say there. But we'll get straight into the Bundesliga and now, everyone. I think just before we were coming on, it was there's been big debates online. Uh, everyone uh, if you're at home anyway, you probably spoke with a family member or your mates. Um, as a couple of lads have mentioned already, Bunzi, it, it was very surreal. It was very, very mm. surreal watching empty stadiums. And as I mentioned slightly, people online have been talking about too much contact. And I, I find it very difficult to, to really, really struggle to think how you could manage. You'd have to change the laws of football from all around the world to, to really make it a non contact sport. But Mickey, what are you? What were your thoughts on the resumed Bundesliga campaign? Um, any any of the key points that you feel that the Bundesliga uh, have implemented that you've really you've really thought that was a, that was a good idea? Um, um, I think they've done it well. Uh, the substitutes all two meters apart, as you can see. Masks were optional. You only seen one or two players with masks. Um, they're all, all the players are being tested before the play. Anyone that doesn't has to go in self isolation. We all know this, so this will happen obviously in the Premier League. Looking, looking at the games, the atmosphere was very, very strange. It was mm. like watching a youth team game with no fans in the in the ground. It's something we're going to have to get used to because I think this is something that's going to happen for the next six months at least. Maybe the whole of next season. I do not know, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, talking, going on the point that someone says there's too much contact, what you've got to remember is Germany are weeks ahead of us in their recovery. So we need to th be thinking, oh, yes, in England, there probably would have been too much contact. Yes, in Germany, I think it's about right. The, 
there's no you, there's no point in playing football unless they can do play football. Yeah. But yeah. I find it one thing I did find strange was the social distancing, celebrating elbows, and you got blokes putting arms around you while you're playing <laughs> and touching you while you're playing. Why do you need to social distance? The silly. It was a bit weird, but it's something we've got to get used to. But I think it's. I think I thought of an idea: is football clubs need to come up with a, a way of creating an atmosphere at their own grounds. Yeah. Now, in the modern world, we've got modern technology. We we could put cardboard cut out of fans. You could be a competition every week. You win the competition, your picture gets cut out and put on the thing. And then the tannoy does fake crowd noise. Yeah. I, 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 think it, I think that's the way forward. That's one thing we've learned from the Bundesliga. Oh, listen, the Bundesliga was, was the guinea pig. It was great to see live football, but there were some things missing. It's down to the clubs to deal with what was missing. Yeah. yeah. Spot on there, Mickey. And I think about the sound system. I think Manchester City have already got one in place for the Champions League nights. That they can use anyway. Um, so I think that, <laughs> For Man City, this is normal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's spot on there, Mickey, in terms of technology. Um, in, in terms of technology, it's a big point. I, think. I, I heard Man City, I heard Man City bought 20 blow up dolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it, technology is a big point. I think there, um, in terms of what everyone, I thought, Mickey, was it, what league was it? Everyone is stepping, if you, if you know, it, is, uh, it was a cut out, it was the Spanish league or the Italian league or something. Um, or was it Dutch? That had the, the club or cut oh, people sent Oh, wait a minute, it was, oh, I, Were I think it was, Wolfsburg? I think it was yeah. something like was that. It, yeah, yeah, it was some German Wolfsburg. team, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. I think there was mention Gladbach, but obviously they were away at Eintracht Frankfurt. Yeah. Per- think... Perusia are glad to be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they go down that route. Really. Uh, doing days, really. Um, but yeah, no, that'd be interesting. Uh, everyone, let us know your thoughts on that. I think, as Mickey said, the, 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 um, the facilities, and we live in a technology world now that the players and the league are doing the most important things, and that's obviously stay the distance, get tested, and all that before they start playing. Um, as, as the lads have said, I think it will be a very long time until we do see any football in the Premier League. Still, currently, yeah. as Mickey said, we're, we are a bit behind, quite a while behind Germany anyway. Dave, um, but and you don't want a second spike in infections as well, so it can change daily. But kind of in terms of technology-wise, or what have you liked? As Mickey said, then the celebrations were a bit strange, weren't they? Um, but I think to continue the, the guidelines of every government, just stay a distance and you don't really... And it'd be interesting to see. And did everyone else click on and when you were watching the game, Bunsy? I don't know if it was me or if there is a law. Everyone let us know in your comment section below. There was no one on front posts and your back posts. Did anyone else click onto mm. that? In every yeah. single game, there was no one on the front post and back post. And be interesting to see everyone if you if you're aware of the law anyway in, in current Bundesliga, check next week or this week, I think it's tonight or anyway, when the Bundesliga is back on. Look if front post if there is a front post back post thing going on, be interesting because will teams exploit that in terms of if there is obviously in terms of in the rule changes anyway, but let us know your thoughts in the comment section below on that. Um but yeah, Connor it's it, it who was I talking to then? Was it Connor? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of slightly just adding on what you'd said then, uh, did you did you, did you click onto that uh, in in the games, mate? Or? No, I I didn't. To be fair, I'll have to you know go back and watch that. But to go back what um, Mickey said, I think like he said, like they've done a fantastic job so far. Uh, with the Bundesliga and things like that, I, I, I just laughed at the photo of like the I think it was the Schalke bench where like they were all separated. I just really thought that was funny <laughs> for some reason. Uh, yeah, it, that just made my day. Uh, did anyone else see? Um, uh, of course, you've got Haaland, you know, doing fantastic for Dortmund. But did anyone else see his like post-match interview 
when he was just so so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> was, he just, yeah, he really just cannot was. do interviews. He just cannot <laughs> he had, do yeah. interviews. He had one one word answers for everything, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd hate to interview him. I tell you, it'd be one of those awkward like I think he does it on purpose. Um, I yeah. think that uh, he, he just does it as a, as a bit of a funny joke anyway. But uh, <laughs> everyone go on Twitter, and I think it, it's spot on there, Connor, because I, I laughed my head off. <laughs> I think someone had made a made a montage of a uh, of Kevin Allen's interviews when he was at RB Leipzig as well. Same old talent, different clubs. Uh, I think put it that way. Anyway, be interesting if he does the interviews when he. I'd love him to come to Liverpool one day. But yeah, that was spot on there, mate. If you want a bit of a chuckle, anyway, go type into Twitter Kevin Allen's uh, interview montage. Uh, it should come up anyway um, on the top one. But I, I found that hilarious. It'd be very. It's hard enough doing interviews. Obviously, imagine being an interviewer uh, like uh, at the head of the professional game of football. <laughs> I, but... I tell you, that that talent <laughs> is a talent. Yeah, he is. Yeah, can yeah, we yeah. can we just remember that he is still only a kid as well? That's probably half mm-hmm. the reason why he's a bit awkward. Oh, he's yeah, We've, yeah, he's still only a kid, really, isn't he? So yeah, he is. he's yeah. just starting. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous how. How good he is at football! I think yeah. in our dreams we could probably imagine being good as him, but not in, uh, in professional standard. He's a big lad as well, six foot odds, six foot three, six foot four, and he's still growing. He's got up until he's twenty-one. If he carries on eating his veg and everything, he'll continue to <laughs> continue to grow. I think I didn't eat enough veg anyway. I'm only about five foot five. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need crusts anyway. On, on the, Jack on the, on works the in a grotto at Christmas time <laughs> helping out Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I go in with uh, Wee Jewel Allen as well. Um, I think he can join me as well. And uh, Shakidi as well. The, 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 the midgets <laughs> the midgets of the Liverpool team anyway. Yeah, but Shakiri makes up in his wideness for us. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't sk- skip his breakfast, did he? Uh, he's, he? He's had his wheat a bit anyway. But yeah, Doug, Doug and Dave, uh, we'll ask, let's start with uh, Doug, mate. In terms of what did you like? Uh, anything about the Bundesliga? Anything that you've seen implemented? Uh, really... Massive shout out to Taiwo Awonyi for scoring his first goal for Mainz at the weekend. Uh, um, Mainz coming back from two goals down to draw 2 2 with uh, FC Cologne. I, I actually like the fact that. When the substitutes began substitute, immediately the first thing they were given was a mask. Now I don't know I don't know if that's gonna be happening in the Premier League, but I I honestly enjoyed all the action. I, I watched most of the games actually. There is one game going on and um uh, uh Bayer Leverkusen are two one up on Werder Bremen and Kai Havertz has scored both goals. So I don't know I don't know if that is uh something to maybe look at. Um but I have to say from watching all the games there's been some horrendous defending. There's been there's been some very very good player. Julian Brandt's performance for Ooh. Dortmund was absolutely superb. I mean that guy is an absolute baller. Uh, sorry, <laughs> someone pointed out on Twitter. I don't know who it was, but someone pointed out on Twitter that I said baller a lot this weekend. So I apologise about that. Um, but apart from that, I, Dortmund were absolutely superb. Four 0 against Schalke. It, lo- it felt like they weren't away from home. Uh, they weren't away from it at all. Uh, one thing I will say though was watching the Bayern Munich game yesterday, and uh, Goretzka needs to learn how to throw because he literally goes for a throw and he basically <coughs> lifts the ball in the air and it goes out for another throw. And so I, he, I, th- I don't know if what he's been doing on lockdown, but that's that's something else to uh, to say. And actually, one thing that I can take away is. Um, an empty signal of Duna Park has more atmosphere than the empty had. So, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> they get, they're really getting it uh, today, aren't they, yeah, City fans? Um, but yeah, they deserve it. To, they deserve it yeah. as well. Can, can I, I just can add I... something? It's still louder than Old Trafford. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, on the point of good asking me to see in that, and I think I, I'm terrible at throw-ins anyway. I think uh, he's probably been practicing with his socks in the laundry in yeah. the laundry room. Like, woo! Uh, Although, can... I have to say, one thing I've not missed is bloody VAR. Is that in use? In the yes. Yeah. 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 It, it came in for the late, late, late goal in the Leipzig game that was called offside. 
Yeah. Yeah. Bayern Munich have one called as well. Yeah. Leip- Leipzig are bottling it, aren't they, in the, in the Bundesliga? If you're talking about... They, they got beat. Timo had a lot of chances. Yeah. You should have that was 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Oh, one, one. Oh, was it? Yeah, but even yeah. still, I think they yeah. were like they were like second or third in the Bundesliga, aren't they? Um, but Dave, uh, asked you that question as well. Bit of the footage that you what you're seeing in Germany, um, and that you, you liked, I think. I seen is it if a substitute is having a drink, he's got to step away. If um, anyone's having liquids on the bench, you've got to like be five six meters away from or uh, be a distance. Um, any. And it goes that you'd, you'd seen Germany use, mate, that you'd, you'd want to see in it. Well, the five substitute use. rule is good, I think. The five substitute mm. rule, which will be yeah. every... It, the Premier League will use that as well. It, it's a good uh, rule. Another rule I've seen, which I don't know whether you know about, and I, a, a girl on Twitter, one of the, a girl, I think it was Sky, BBC or Sky Sports, a girl a reporter said at halftime she was given the score lines and she said, and the lads had their balls disinfected at halftime. <laughs> She had an absolute blooper there, didn't she? Yeah, no! The balls, the footballs. Yeah. At half time, the corner flag, they all get rubbed down and disinfected. <laughs> yeah. It was all. I think, yeah, I think, whoever, I think it's... the producer, whoever was typing that up in the. Uh, Obviously, it's all cued, in it? And I bet you when she was reading that, and as soon as she said it, she was probably like... The way she said it, it was just... I didn't realise what she said. She wasn't laughing around. It was just serious. But, but, I bet you she was very serious, so, so credit to her <laughs> uh, for the professionalism. But I, I'll uh, tell you, it was amazing. surreal. It was surreal to watch it. I have to say yeah. that. And um, Some terrible goalkeeping as well. I think Schalke's keeper was a bit all oh. over the shop. But, um, yeah. I'm quite glad we got Adrian to be honest, because he because he had an absolute nightmare. I think I remember the third yeah. goal; it was straight at him. It was absolutely yeah. well, straight like, at him. You should just see that. Tried try to punch it or something, didn't he? Or yeah. like catch yeah. it or something. Like, it went like literally straight past. Like him. a bit, a bit of a carrious effect. Carrious effect. But it was it was weird, um, and as Mickey said and Connor, which is really good. If the Premier League can tweak it here and there and take the, the crowd noise or, you know, the faces in the crowd, maybe for charity, if tenor a, a face and your face could be shown, hundreds of faces shown with, you know, goal celebrations or even do a goal celebration. And they could, put, like, as you said, technology could do anything now. I actually seen a fellow on Sky, a Sky Sports last week saying that he has some app that you can, you can put in fans you know, from every team, say Liverpool, doing it, shouting and screaming. And they can have it on big tannoy systems to make it crowd noise and songs, so they can easily do it. You know, yeah. so mm. that definitely is needed because pin dropping, you can hear them coursing on the pitch. You can hear them, you know, you can hear all the. It just doesn't sound right. It's like a, it's like a, it's like watching you guys play FIFA. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I you knew we get it in, boys. Me. Yeah, I reckon you would not be able to. I, I, I wouldn't be allowed to mic me up if you were recording. Um, and you just hear me screaming at the FRA. Uh, I was that a penalty. <laughs> Put it in my terms anyway. Even though it's a video game. One my mum probably, probably looks at the ceiling in the kitchen going, shut up, will you? <laughs> one thing I did, one thing I did see, which was a wee bit concerning, is that Dedrick Boyata planted a kiss on Marco Gruich's face. I think it was. So he'll probably I, get told off for that, won't he? I think I think there'll be a bit of a, a telling off for that, uh, for for sure. But but apart from that, to be honest, I've been absolutely loving the Bundesliga, and you know, there's been some very very good games. Um, you know, obviously, like there's there's teams that you've probably never heard of. Like I've never heard of SC Paderborn before, <laughs> and and Fortuna Dusseldorf are managed by Uwe Rosler, who I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Sounds either, like a but... team from Star Wars or something. <laughs> SC Paderborn. I know. I was just thinking that. I was just like, I was just thinking that. But um, no, look, look. I think, I think if the Bundesliga can do this, I mean. I mean, obviously, like I think it's next Tuesday. I think it's Borussia Dortmund Bayern, which yeah. is a big game, big big game. So obviously, that could be a title decider. That one. Yeah. Nice no, pass on, lads, and everyone. It's it's going to be up to the authorities and all around the world in terms of the football and stratosphere. Anyway, in terms of how they use technology in a good way, as as Mickey, Dave, and Connor and Joe, you've all mentioned technology as much as. 
companies have started doing voice video dialing conferences and all of that. The technology that everyone has got at their fingertips now is well in advance of give it ten years. We've jumped so so much in the last ten years, and as Mickey said, you can you can dial in the fans into the stadium, and I think in the coming months, even coming years, I think you will have a, a big advance in technology in terms of the experience for the average fan that has not got the capabilities of being inside the stadium, having a season ticket. And I think you'll have a big jump in the experience, not just for the fans inside the stadium, but for the experience of fans that are watching at home. But, lads, thank you very much for jumping on the, the pod today. Um, I'll leave Mickey's socials down in the link in on his Twitter and that if you want. And I'll leave, leave Dave's channel, Dave LFC Chats, Connor from the Cop Council as well. Make sure you do head over to his channel and Doug from the Doug Football Doug out channel anyway. <laughs> nice one for coming. Uh, what was it's what's the full title, mate? I always butchered it. You probably the the Doug the Doug out football channel. Just before obviously we go, obviously I, I don't know if anyone's seen, but obviously the Scottish season has ended today. Um, I have to say, I'm not a fan of giving out championships or releg- relegations early on, but basically, basically the moral of the story is that the season has ended. Celtic are champions, so they've won nine in a row. Hearts are relegated, but this is not the last of it. Honestly, Hearts are considering legal action of the SPFL, so this could go on for weeks it could go on for a couple of months this isn't over yet so for people saying oh hearts are relegated ha 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 i don't think i don't think that's going to happen so yeah um but all the scottish seasons are now ended yeah now it's plus on point to bring that up mate so forgot about it but it's a that's a big <laughs> point anyway rangers are my favorite scottish team anyway if you have to pick one um <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> dave, dave doesn't agree anyway but yeah, um, I think he used to have an old next door neighbour that was a Rangers fan anyway. And that's probably why. And I think my dad likes Rangers. But thank you very much, lads. And uh, everyone at what home watching, thank you very much for watching as well. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on, on this channel as well as the lads' channels as well. Head over to their, their, their channels, creating amazing content. Every single one of you is keep safe, look after one another. And for all the key workers like Mickey and Doug uh, and Dave, and uh, everyone at home as well. Thank you so much for going about your day, day by day, and all the, the NHS workers day to day as well. Huge thank you. Well, nice one, lads, for coming on today. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers, Stay mate. safe. Stay safe. See you Stay later, safe. everyone. Stay safe. Stay safe. You'll never, you'll never walk alone. Cheers. You'll never walk alone. Cheers.